What's up, YouTube? Jeff back again today. Another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And it's hard to believe, but it's already been a week, and we are back for another update roundup. We're going to round up all the updates this week that came out for Samsung phones. Uh, talk about the big ones that I covered in individual videos first. Then I'll move on to some other ones that were smaller updates that had bug fixes, but still some really important apps that you definitely want to make sure you didn't miss those updates. Run down any new features that are in those. There's a couple of small ones. Uh, and then also talk about kind of any updates that should be coming up for next week, just so you guys can be prepared for all of that kind of stuff. Now, before we get started with that, I do want to mention that if you are interested, make sure you check out my Alpha Link. The Alpha Link always has the latest videos. You can also sign up for the newsletter, get in on our mystery box program if you're here in the US. If you buy a Samsung phone through our affiliate link at launch time, get a free case, cleaning kit, desktop phone stand, etc. Uh, we love doing it for the community. You can also stay up with the website and all that other stuff. Check it out in the uh, pinned comment description below if interested. So I have a little Google Keep document here to kind of keep me on track, help me with remembering all the stuff I covered this week. Definitely the largest update this week was Theme Park and the associated Quick Start update. So let me quickly run that down. I also have a little gallery here folder with all the various updates that I covered throughout the week. These are some of the smaller ones in here but uh, I'll be talking about those in a second. So let's go into GoodLock and we'll take a look at the update to Theme Park and just talk about it. There's a full video on this, which I'll link below if you guys wanna check out those because they have a lot more detail. The new version of Theme Park gave us an entirely new method for installing themes and icon packs. So now when you install a theme or an icon pack, you no longer have to create a separate APK, which means it's much faster to go ahead and apply all of your themes and all of your icon packs. Now I demonstrated this in the video where I did the full detailed overview, but you can also now edit and overwrite icon packs and separate themes like quick setting themes. And in addition to that, if you apply an icon pack and then later install new applications, the icons will automatically update to the current pack. You guys can see right now I'm running the Juno icon pack from 1.4 Studios. So if I install a new app from the Play Store, then it will also be themed using that same icon pack Juno from 1.4 Studio. So to take full advantage of this, you also need a couple of other key updates. One of them we're still waiting on, which is the Keys Cafe update. That hasn't come out yet. Hopefully it'll be out next week. But Quickstar did also get an update. You need this to fully take advantage of the new theme park update. So that was the other one that I really covered this week is Quickstar. Um, the Quick Start update, which I'll run down really quickly in the store, some of the key features there. It supports the change, the format of the date displayed on the indicator clock. You guys can see up here, I have mine says 26 FRI for the 26th, which is a Friday. Uh, change the way to connect to Theme Park with One UI 6.0 or higher. That's what I just mentioned, the new method of installing that doesn't require a separate APK. It's basically leveraging the color palette method um, from Android. And uh, it says you need that newest version of Theme Park, of course, to utilize it. So not only one new feature, which is the new date formats, but also a faster, more operational version of Quickstar. And now when you actually go into Quickstar and try to edit one of these themes, it automatically will apply the themes pretty much instantaneously. So I show this in the other video, but when you style a quick panel and you tap on it, it's pretty much instantaneous that it goes ahead and does the styling for you. It doesn't take any time really at all whereas before it was a very big delay when doing that. So those are the two big ones, Theme Park, Quick Start. I'll drop a link below so you can check it out uh, for those particular updates, but they are uh, probably the most interesting ones of the week. The next thing was a surprise Galaxy S24 series update, uh, which only arrived for the UK and Europe, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but I did make a video on it. This brought some new cellular bands uh, for the European models and also took away some compatibility for some German models. Um, it's not a US update. It's not gonna be in any other regions other than Europe and the UK, but that did roll out with a second April security patch version on the S24 devices. So if you're in the Europe or UK, make sure you did grab that one. Uh, Multistar got a new update. It uh, I haven't installed the APK yet. I'm about to make a video on that a little bit later today. But for those of you guys who don't know much about Multistar, Multistar is also in good lock, but it's over here on the life up side. Multistar lets you basically do a lot with multitasking, uh, change the way you multitask on your Galaxy phone. And in the new version, they added some features that allow you 
to keep your apps in split screen mode, but it's specific to foldables. So those of you on the Galaxy S line might not get the maximum benefit from this, but it is still an update that you will receive. So if you have a fold device or you have a tablet like a Tab S9, Tab S9 Ultra, you definitely wanna make sure you get this update. I am gonna make a video on it because I think the feature is very welcome for those of you who have those devices. But those of us who have the S series only, you might not notice the maximum benefit. Uh, the next thing was the pinup update. So the pinup update is a rather large one. I know not everybody uses pinup. Pinup is the Samsung uh, app that basically allows you to enable additional functionality with your S Pen. So if you use the S Pen a lot, it's really one that you want to check out. So I'll show you guys really quick the update that came out. It's really like for drawing, sketching, things like that. There's a huge change log here. New brushes for drawing tools, improved layering, color extraction, uh, separated the post and repost tab, so a UI change. There's quite a lot in this update for those of you guys who do enjoy drawing and sketching with your S Pen. I'm gonna make a detailed video of this because there's kind of a lot of little changes inside the UI. Samsung only pushes out a pinup update maybe once every six months to a year, but when they do, they tend to be rather large updates. So if you enjoy drawing, like I said, definitely grab that one and check out my video next week where I run down all of these features in great detail. Uh, the next one, Samsung call settings and on-device resources. So this is one, let me go back into that gallery folder I had with all the updates. This is one where there was a ton of updates uh, on-device resources for the U.S., English, different language packs. This is mainly if you use the interpreter, um, Bixby text call, any of some of those other AI features. This allows it to do a lot of that computational stuff on device instead of in the cloud. So if you care about your privacy base, you can choose to do a lot of that on device. Uh, and also for like interpreters and Bixby text call, like I said, you can do all that stuff. And this is very large files. So this is probably a gigabyte total. But if you do care about that, doing these things on device, you're going to have installed these at some point and you'll have an update. And so it makes things a little bit faster, a little bit more reliable. Uh, Samsung call settings, that's a, a update to the actual phone app and call app on your device. This improved call clarity and stability. Not a massive update here, but here's the actual screenshot for that one. Call and call settings, so you should get two separate updates for that. Um, they did arrive together though for me, so if you have them, you probably are gonna have those back to back. Uh, let's see, what else? Samsung voice recorder. This one just squashed some bugs. So let me see if I can find the screenshot. There it is. And Samsung keyboard also arrived in an update along with Samsung voice recorder. Both of these were just stability changes, no new features. But with Samsung keyboard, they always make improvements to things like predictive text, uh, swipe typing, all that kind of stuff. So it's always worth getting a keyboard update. If you're using the Samsung keyboard, of course, if you're using Gboard or something else, then maybe it's not as important, but it is something if you're using the Samsung keyboard, you always want to take advantage of. The next one is Samsung Quick Share. So this is one that probably won't apply to a lot of people in terms of you might not necessarily care about this update. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. This one had one new feature, supports Family Hub refrigerator nearby sharing. So basically, if you have a fancy Samsung Family Hub refrigerator that has that screen on it, you can automatically share a photo from your smartphone or tablet or Galaxy computer directly to that hub. And so that's a cool feature. I don't have one of those yet. Um, when we we're looking to get a new house in the next few years, I'm going to probably buy one of those Samsung refrigerators because I love how they look uh, just to add to my Samsung ecosystem. So it's definitely a cool feature if you're in the camp of people who don't do have that uh, refrigerator at home. The last thing is Samsung internet browser beta. At least I think that's the last thing. Let's run to down voice recorder. Quick share, call settings, voice recorder, Samsung keyboard. Yep, I believe that's the last one. So Samsung Internet Beta, if you're using Samsung Internet and you want to install the beta version, this is a very, very cool new feature. Uh, Google Chrome has had this for a while. It's the ability to take screenshots in secret mode, which is basically the same as incognito mode in Chrome. So if you go into secret mode in the new beta version, turn on secret mode, and then you go up here, to the settings, you're gonna to have to go into the settings on secret mode, secret mode settings. Go down here, it says allow screenshots in secret mode, just toggle that on. And then when you go back, now you'll be able to take a screenshot without getting the error that says this app does not allow screenshots, which is what you used to see when you did that. So anyway, very cool feature if you use Samsung Internet Browser and you want to try the beta. I always have that and the stable version installed. 
obviously because I make all these updates on Samsung phones, I need as many Samsung apps installed as possible for testing purposes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, the full rundown. Of course, there's probably some updates I missed. Samsung pushes out 50, 60 updates every single week to their apps. I try to choose the most relevant, important ones for you guys. If you have something you think I missed that's important, drop it in the comments. We can talk about it below. I'll be back with another roundup next week. Of course, I'll be covering the apps, updates, and news as they happen with videos during the week as well. Make sure you subscribe. If you want to check out the alpha link, subscribe to the newsletter. Get in on the mystery boxes. The links will be below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.